Hey everyone, Lane here from Maker's Lane. So this is going to be part seven, six? No, seven of my barn renovation series. And today, I'm gonna do the last part that I really need to do to get this thing pretty well insulated so that I can actually like start moving in here and be pretty comfortable. Uh, I probably will start moving some of the stuff in and maybe building some of the simpler countertops just to get me so that I'm uh, ready to go. But yeah, so this guy. Um, so the plan for this garage door is gonna be pretty basic. It's gonna have a metal frame, and then I'm going to use the roof pieces that I had left over from my last project. So yeah, so it'll have sheet metal as like the siding. So it's not gonna be your traditional garage door where it kind of like has the folds in it. So I want to kind of match everything in here as far as like the size and everything. So these are six inch walls. So I'm gonna keep it to that six inches. This will actually be a two-part series. So the first part, I'm just gonna build it and get it up there. Um, and then the second part, I'm actually gonna go into the actual mechanics of how I'm going to lift it and you know some of the details of like how much it weighs. Obviously, I haven't built it yet, so I don't know exactly how much it weighs, which means I can't tell you which uh, mechanic system. I have an idea of what I'm gonna use uh, to lift it, but for right now, uh, I'm just gonna make this a two-part video. But yeah, so the first thing I need to do is actually to make out the outside metal frame. Um, it's just going to be L-channel. That's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to have eight pieces, eight ten-foot pieces of L-channel, and then I'll have uh, I'll weld together six-inch spacers. So basically, I'll have two frames, and I'll put them together, and the total width will be about six inches um, because that's what the wall is. I actually think it's a little bit over it. It might be closer to seven inches just because with the siding and everything on it, it's just gonna be a little bit thicker. I'm also going to mount uh, two metal plates to each side and also two more on the outside of that. On the door itself, it'll just have rods and then on the wall, it's actually gonna have bearings. So the rod's gonna go into the bearing, obviously. So yeah, I'll have that set up and then, yeah, it'll also have a mandora on this side. So I have to put that in there. So let's first uh, load up the outside frame. So I also have uh, two metal pieces running down for support. But yeah, so that's gonna be the basic frame. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, I'm gonna take some measurements just to make sure. It's supposed to be 10 foot by 10 foot door, but I think it's actually a little bit taller than it is wide. So let's get started by measuring and cutting those outside frame pieces. Okay, so I'm gonna make it 119 by 119. So just an inch short of the 10 foot. It actually is the exact same size. It's actually 10 foot by 10 foot. So I did a good job framing up, I guess. This knife, I got it as a groomsman gift for my cousin. It's freaking nice. It's a buck knife. It's not sponsored, I just like the knife. So yeah, just a basic square, not a whole lot to it. So I'm gonna cut these to 119, and since it's an L, I'm gonna cut straight up one side and then at a 45 on the other, so that way the two pieces will fit together. And then I'm gonna weld it together. So to cut it, there's many different ways I can approach this. I could use a cutoff wheel, use a hacksaw, gnaw at it, uh, you know, just beat on it until it breaks. The method that I'm gonna do that I get the most enjoyment out of is to use a plasma cutter. Uh, so Yes Welder, I actually did a previous video on their five-in-one welder slash plasma cutter. They actually just sent me the standalone plasma cutter, which is you know supposed to be a little bit better since it is a standalone one. So I'm pretty excited to uh, get it out and use it. It's not really going to be a full review video as far as like all the specs and everything. They have that on their website, and there's plenty of other people who've done better videos than I will. It's more gonna be to show how awesome this actual product is. So yeah, I'm pretty excited to use this guy. I'm still gonna also use their 5-in-1 welder that they uh, sent me to actually weld everything up uh, because it's an awesome, awesome welder. Like I said, they're awesome enough to send this out to me as well. 
They also sent me this awesome welding mask. So I've used welding masks before that are auto darkening, which most nicer welding masks have that feature. It makes it a lot easier to not have to like open it up and close your visor. And this one has an awesome feature, it functions really well. You can adjust it, you can fine tune it. Really nice uh, welding mask. But what I like about it, not only is the design kind of cool and they have multiple different kinds if you're not into this one, it's kind of like a cowboy themed uh, welding mask. It's pretty cool design. What's really awesome about this that I've never seen before and that has like blown my mind, I don't know if I'm just not that into the welding world or whatever, but it has side lenses so like you can see out the side while you're welding as well, which means you basically have a I don't know, 120 degree viewpoint as far instead of that like 90 degree viewpoint like you have on typical welding masks. So that's that's awesome. But yeah, so they sent me this huge thank you to Yes Welder for sending me these these products. I hope they do as well as the 501 welder did. I'm sure they will. So, but yeah, let's go ahead and get to cutting this frame. That way we can start getting the basic idea of what this thing's going to look like. So I got the basic part of the frames, I ran the two rails down just to get kind of more uh, structural and easier to move around. So yeah, that's, that's, this is the basic shape as far as what I'm going to put on here. I think uh, once I get it up, I might have to add some more supports just so it doesn't like wobble and twist. I do still need to add a door to it and to the, to the outside frame. But I think I'm gonna wait until I get the two pieces together. Speaking of that, I do need a second piece. I do need the back part of the frames. Hopefully, I can make it unnecessarily loud. So now that I got both of these all loaded up, I need to get the distance that I want. So with the distance of the uh, siding and the other side of the siding, if I make the total width six inches, it should be the same width as the door. So now I need the spacing pieces between the two. So since these are inch and a half pieces, that's three inches. So that means I basically need like a, a bunch of three inch pieces all around the entire frame to basically separate the two and get that right with So let's go ahead and cut all those pieces and then get them welded together so that we have a full frame built.
So I just finished kind of just getting these more structurally sound. So I noticed when I lifted it up and put these 10 pieces on that the center frame was kind of flexing a little bit. So I went ahead and put some extra tubing here. This will also be able to hold the metal because I'm gonna put metal on this side of that channel there. Um, and the same up at the top here. So basically the whole door frame here is now structurally, like I can basically, I can, you know, I can jump on it. So that's what I was doing. And then I also ran a single bar in the center here because it doesn't have to look as pretty. I was initially, I already had went ahead and got the insulation, but I think just because of how I'm gonna mount it. So I got this big metal plate sitting right there. You can kind of see it. Um, and that I'm gonna use basically cut into four pieces and then two of them will go on the frame itself. And then two of them will go up here in the corner. Uh, and I got these bearings. They fit, sorry about that. They fit an inch and a half diameter rod through it. And I have that rod here somewhere. I was using it as a hammer, as most people do, you know. Uh, where did it go? All right, well, I lost it for the time being. I'll find it here in a minute. It's probably underneath the, the project. Uh, but anyways, uh, it's an inch and a half rod. It's gonna go into this bearing. I have two of these. So these will be mounted to a plate, and then that plate will be mounted to here. And I'm gonna use like bolts for that. And then when I go to put it up here in the top, so the other plate will actually just be screwed in and then I don't know I kind of got to mess with some stuff because I'm not 100% how I'm going to set it up yet. It's going to be some trial and error type things but, but that's a basic concept. It's going to be a rod going through a bearing. One's going to be fixed the other one's not. I don't have a drill bit big enough to actually drill an inch and a half hole through these plates so I'm actually going to use the plasma cutter again to cut those holes. I'm going to go ahead and get my ladder I get the door basically kind of where I want it situated. I'm just going to go through some things to kind of figure out how I'm going to do this. Um, like I said, I got to cut that plate over there into four pieces. So I, I could probably go ahead and do that. And then I don't know, I, I'm just going to kind of go by the seat of my pants on this one because it really has to be perfectly aligned when I do this. Like I can't have it off that much because then otherwise the door won't lift correctly um, or it will like it's it'll get like caught on the side or something like that so this is going to be a lot of trial and error i may not get it the first time and i may end up getting it without actually filming it so i'm sorry if i do but yeah it is what it is it's not like i do this every day so it's a learning experience for me too so let's go ahead and cut the plate get it mounted and start working on this whatever the hinges, I don't know, whatever. Yeah. Go. I think I figured out what I'm gonna do. It was kind of like the plan before. So I got the bearing, I got four of these plates cut up, and then I got this metal rod, which is what I was looking for earlier. It fits into here. I already cut a hole into this plate with my plasma cutter. So this is, this is what I'm thinking. So two of the plates I'm gonna cut, and then I will weld the bottom and weld the top, make sure they're obviously this is perpendicular with the plate so that it, sits, it comes out completely straight. And then I will cut this off and then I will have, have another plate that I will also cut a hole in and then I will mount this bearing to it so the hole will be way bigger than what this is. So I'll bolt this to the plate. So this will sit on the inside. So this plate will go up here this will sit on the inside. There'll be a plate on the back of this here. And basically then I will screw this in to, to the wall. From the other side, I will bolt it in to the frame itself using like half inch bolts. That, and then I will elongate the holes on the plate so that it can slide up and down a little bit so I can make some uh, minor adjustments on it. But yeah, that's, that's basically what I'm thinking. 
So I have to now, so I need to cut uh, the hole in three more of the plates and then I can weld this on, well, cut, cut it off to where I need it to be, weld it on, and then we'll be able to mount it up there. I know it's a lot. Uh, again, I don't know, I don't know if this will work. I'm hoping it will. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to have this really close to being perfect so that it opens and closes correctly. So let's go ahead and cut some more holes and weld some stuff up. Okay. okay, so I got the two pieces up there in the corner. I don't know if you can see them. We got that guy and that guy mounted. Uh, so I haven't put the bearings on yet or the other plate, but I just wanted to show because I was really worried that this thing would not like move, it'd get bound up. But without anything on it, Hold on, let me let me let me set you further back. This baby. It already moves without the bearings, so uh, that's a good sign. I still gotta check to see if uh, it's gonna bind up on the top. I really can't, won't be able to tell that until I get the bearings on, because basically I can't have it completely flush on the bottom or completely flush on the top because that rotation, there's about a half an inch of, of clearance that I'm gonna need. It might be even like an inch. So I, I added that into the calculations, um, but I mean, it moves right now, so that's a good sign. So I'm pretty happy about that. It's hung now. The next thing that's gonna be to do is obviously mount the bearings on there. Yeah, so exciting. I'm uh, pretty happy about this. Pieces. 
So I'm just going to use some spray paint, nothing special. That will look a little something like, so yeah. Now that that's done, um, I'm gonna call it a day. Like I said, the next video will be the actual man door itself, and then I'll do a follow-up video. It's gonna take me probably a little bit longer, so it may be a little bit before it's released, but the last video is going to be the actual mechanism to lift the door. So I'm contemplating a couple different ideas, whether I wanna use like an old garage door, whether I wanna use a counterweight system, whether I wanna use a winch. Those are all the possibilities that I might use. But again, I haven't figured it out yet. I also gotta figure out how I'm going to uh, build a door latch into here. Because it is six inches, like typical door handles won't work. So I gotta either modify or make something um, special to make it fit this door here. But yeah, so that's it for this video. Um, I hope you guys enjoy the video. I know I enjoyed this project. I feel like this door really adds a lot of character to this space. I have started to um, actually put some of the stuff in my shop and I'm actually starting to work out here. It's getting ready to get warm out, so I'm, I'm happy to get out here. I got a lot more projects that I wanna do before I call this shop complete. But as most workshops go, it will never actually be complete. I will always be upgrading, adding new stuff, continuing to expand. If that's the kind of stuff you like, you know, stick around, check out those videos. Make sure to hit me up with any questions you may have. Uh, I'd be happy to answer them. But uh, until next time, I'm Lane from Makers Lane. You guys have a good one. Gareth, if you're watching this, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment, and ring that bell, do all the stuff, even though I know you won't.